The number of people calling NHS 24 over concerns for their mental health has risen by nearly 600% in the past four years. That's according to new figures obtained by the Scottish Labour Party through a freedom of information request. They're calling it a mental health epidemic. Paul Sweeney's the party's mental health spokesperson. He's with me in the studio now. Good morning to you. Good morning. Um, what's behind all this? Well, I think we can surmise there's a number of factors, particularly the legacy of the pandemic. Many people had issues there, but what we've seen from evidence from, for example, the Samaritans has been that, as we've seen the cost of living crisis impact, the majority of Scottish households, there's been a real spike in people feeling that hardship and it does translate into um, distressed mental health situations. You know, people for the first time have experienced the fact that they just can't make ends meet at the end of the month uh, and that can translate into a lot of mental health crises. So I think we're seeing a, a big impact on the NHS in terms of people picking up the phone to try and access support. But the really alarming thing has been there's been a huge increase in the number of calls that have dropped off and haven't been answered. And that's a real concern when people are actually taking that step to reach out that the NHS just simply isn't there for them at that moment. Can you say for sure that, that this is evidence that our mental health is getting worse? Or is it perhaps evidence that we're seeking help now in areas that we wouldn't have sought help, that we just have got on with, if you like, in the past? Well, I think there is a combination where people have been talking more about their personal welfare, particularly mental health welfare, during the pandemic. Perhaps there is an element of that, but I think there's definitely a correlation with the circumstances, particularly economic circumstances at the present time. Uh, we've seen that evidence from other charities, as I mentioned. So I think there is a major issue there where we're not thinking holistically, and as the government are moving to freeze mental health spending as a share of NHS expenditure and overall in the coming financial year, that's only going to get worse. The resources just simply aren't there to help people in this moment of need. And the worry is that we're going to lose people out there who we could be otherwise helping. Then there's many peer-to-peer, -peer op uh, you know, we've seen, for example, the Men's Sheds project, for example, which had its funding cut as well. These are sorts of community-based projects that do avoid putting costs onto the NHS, but then they've been cut as well. So it's all been loaded onto our National Health Service uh, when it itself is under senior financial yeah, I mean, pressure. Look, the Scottish Government point out direct investment in mental health has more than doubled in the past two years. The draft budget for mental health services is increasing 139% over this Parliament. They say they're continuing to invest in, in growing the workforce. They're looking for more improvements. I mean, it, it, it's disingenuous. They are, it's being frozen at the moment, but they've done a lot of work on this in they, the recent past. They have committed to having mental health spending at 10% of the overall National Health Service spend, yet we're nowhere near that. That's the scale of which we need to approach. But also what then happens is if the end isn't available on the NHS 24 helpline, you're going to have more and more people presenting at A&E with a crisis situation. And that simply loads more pressure onto our A&E services, which you know are in severe crisis at the moment. Mm. So, you know, it's a kind of fallacy, really, to sort of throw money at a problem without seriously checking these metrics. We were alarmed when we saw these statistics. I think it's clear to see that the percentages are pretty much off the charts. Yeah. Yet we are resourcing this from, properly. From Inverclyde Council on, and like every council leader, he's looking at a budget, a budget shortfall mm. at the moment. He's talking about cutting essential services. Life's going to get a lot harder. That's the kind of thing. Libraries closing, swimming pools closing that could have an impact on people's mental health. But it's also an illustration of just how tight times are. Where do you want the government to get money from to allocate to this. Well, this is all about cost avoidance as well, because like you say, there are better lower cost ways of dealing with this in the community and often it's a fallacy to, for example, close a library or cut a whole health and social care partnership funding for a community-based project or even a men's sheds project and then all of a sudden you've got that loaded onto the National Health Service where it's far more expensive but to, to deliver it. Well, money is finite, yes, of course, and, but the issue is efficient spending across the system. You know, if you're going to panic, uh, you know, anxiously cut a red line through a council budget it's saying we're going to save X amount of money. Actually, it's a fallacy because it's just loading it onto the National Health Service where that cost's been picked up somewhere else. And usually it's in a crisis situation where it's far more expensive to deal with. So we need to look at the government having a whole system approach to this and simply, for example, loading cuts onto councils then produces a higher cost elsewhere, say, for example, the National Health Service or when the police have to go to someone who's saying they've got suicidal thoughts and they have to spend a whole shift sitting with someone in case they, they um, are suicidal. Well, you are pressing the government on this. I assume you're going to continue to do so. We'll Absolutely. watch what develops. Paul Sweeney, thank you very much thank indeed you. for being with us this morning.